All right, let's take a look at some of the other toolpath options that we have here. So I'm gonna to hit toolpaths. I'm just gonna show some of the other options that we have available. I'm not gonna go through all of them because there's a lot of them and most of them we will not ever need in this class or possibly ever. Um, but the one we're using, like I said, is this one called V-Carve. And what that does, so that's the way you can get these nice crisp corners that we get in all of our letters here is using this v-carve. Some of the other ones you might use at times are profile, pocket, and drilling. Uh, most of the other ones you probably won't use. Uh, maybe some of the 3D roughing ones. I'll go over those another time, not today. That's if you're carving out something in 3D, like if you're doing the dragsters. So let's come back here to my 2D view. I'm gonna just move all of this out of the way. I don't necessarily want to delete it. I'm just going to take it all. I'm just going to put it over here. For our example, let's use just a rectangle. So I'm going to put a rectangle right here. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to show you some of the different toolpaths. All right, so I hit apply. I'm going to hit close. So I have a rectangle right here. doesn't matter what size it is. So I'm going to click toolpaths. And again, if that toolpaths bar keeps going away and it's really annoying hit this little pin and let's start with this profile toolpath so what the profile toolpath is going to do is it's going to just follow along whatever your shape is so I'm going to click this rectangle actually here I'm going to make a circle also just so we can kind of see the differences So if I just do a bunch of stuff and I hit calculate, if I don't have anything selected, it's going to give me an error that says no suitable vectors selected. You must select a vector. That's because I did not select anything. So highlight whatever it is you want to do and it'll turn pink and that way you know it is selected. All right, so I'm doing a profile. What profile again and what it's going to do is just follow your line right there. Start depth, we're going to start at the top of our board, which is zero. For cut depth is how deep do we want to cut it. So this we need to know how deep our material is, or how thick our material is. Ours is half an inch. So if I set this to 0.5 inches right here, that's going to go all the way through our material. We don't want to do that right now. Let's, I'm going to go down halfway, so 0.25, quarter of an inch. The tool select. So here we have more tools. An end mill, this is kind of just like a cylinder, so it's flat on the bottom. It's called an end mill because it can mill on the end of the bit. It's designed to cut a flat bottom of whatever it is. A ball nose is rounded on the bottom. It's like a ball. Um, so that's good for doing three-dimensional things or if you need a curved bottom of that line. The v-bit we talked about that gives that V shape. OGs and roundovers give different shapes to it. That's if you're doing like furniture or molding. Engraving will do a really fine point if you're just kind of scratching letters into things. But I'm going to show you an end mill. So you can see we also have the different diameters of our bit. I'm just going to put a quarter inch end mill. So the diameter a quarter of an inch right there. Hit select. Again, don't do this. Just follow along passes right here so every time it drills so if this is like a half an inch right here let's say I want to do it in three passes so it'll go down a third of the way it'll go down a third of the way and then another third of the way since I'm only going a quarter of an inch it does all that math for me so 0 0.0833 0 0.1667 and 0.25 usually you won't have to do anything with this the computer will figure it all out that's just what that is this one you would have to do something with. So machine vectors on the outside, on the inside, and on. So what that means is my line right here, so my circle. If I did on the outside of the circle, you can kind of see a little diagram right here. It will cut around the outside of the circle. If I did on the inside, again you can see it there, it'll cut on the inside of my circle. And if I did it on, that will just be right there on that line. 
So that's kind of like if you were cutting it at us with scissors, you would just follow that line. Uh, I'm going to do both of those. For this one, I'm going to do, let's just do it on the line. We'll take a look. Uh, do separate last pass, add tabs. We're going to skip over this stuff right now. Ramping, we don't need ramping. These are a little bit more advanced things that you may need in the future, but right now we don't need to worry about them. I'm going to hit calculate. So again, I've got my old thing there. I want to get rid of that. I'm going to hit reset preview. And we can see what the bit is going to do. It's going to come down and it's going to cut out my circle. Well, actually, it looks like first it's going to cut out my rectangle. And then it's going to do my circle. So I'm going to hit preview. I'm going to hit preview visible toolpaths. All right, that went a little bit quick. I'm going to reset it. Oh. Preview. So you can see the bit is moving around along my line for my rectangle. It's going to take three passes, so it's going to go a little bit deeper each time. And then it will go to the circle and do the same thing on there. Now one thing you'll notice, the circle looks really good, nice and round, but my rectangle, if you notice, has the inside corner is a nice 90 degree corner, but the outside is rounded. The reason it's rounded is because your bit is round. So if I reset preview, so when my bit is following that line, that right there is the radius of my bit. So one of the drawbacks of a CNC machine is it's a little bit more difficult to get crisp corners like that because your rounded bit will give you a rounded corner. Now the inside corner you can see is fine. So most shapes it won't really you know cause any problem like the circle wouldn't cause a problem but if you need really crisp corners uh, there's ways around it. Alright. So that is a profile toolpath right there. Now the other one you might use is a pocket toolpath and what a pocket is going to do is kind of like fill in that whole area right there. It'll carve out that whole area. So again I'm going to highlight these two. I'm going to set my cut depth to 0.25 halfway through my material. My end mill I'm going to do that quarter inch end mill again. Hit select and I'm not going to need a larger clearance tool. Uh, clear pocket offset versus raster. So offset will kind of go in the middle and kind of spiral out. A raster will kind of start at the bottom and go a line like that. There's different reasons why you might want them. Uh, ramping, what ramping is, is instead of going straight down at the beginning, it'll kind of zigzag as it goes in. For most of what we do, it doesn't really matter. You can leave it off. But when I hit calculate and preview with this, so my profile followed the line, but now you can see it's filling in there. So I'm going to hit preview, and you can see that bit is carving out what they call a pocket. And again, it's going a little bit deeper each time. It's going to take three passes because that's what it's set to. Now that circle looks great again, but again the outside of our rectangle you can see has that rounded corner. Usually not a problem, but that's just something you got to deal with with the CNC. So that's good if you want to carve out an area. All right, Let's close drilling toolpath. What drilling is, is just like it sounds, it will drill little holes. So I'm going to just put some circles here. And the way the drilling path works is it will find the center of whatever your circle is right there and drill a hole into it. So if I wanted it, let's say I want to go all the way through my material, I'm going to hit 0.5 inches. My drill bit, um, sure, quarter inch, that works. 
use peck drilling. What peck drilling is, is it'll go down a little bit, come out. Go down a little bit more, come out. Go down a little bit further than that, come out. That's useful because when it goes down, all that waste material that is drilling out, so all the sawdust and everything, it gives it some uh, room to come out because otherwise it'll all just get packed in there. Um, yeah, sure, let's turn it on. Do, do, do. I'm just going to hit calculate. All right, so I am just have one thing selected. I'm going to hit calculate, and you can see when I preview that, it's just going to drill a hole right there. All right, if I have a bunch of things selected and calculate, you can see it's going to go to each one. Now, important thing to note, it just finds the very center of all of these things. It doesn't matter what size you have, shape or circle or whatever, it's going to find the very center and drill a hole there. So if you want to say like have this rectangle right here and put a hole in a specific spot, what I would do is make a circle with the diameter of my bit. So let's say I have a quarter inch bit, I'm going to make my diameter quarter of an inch and that's say I needed a hole here here, 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 that way, those four, it would drill right there. Right. Usually you won't have to drill anything with the CNC machine, but it's possible. So I'm going to hit, actually, I want to show you another thing right here. So my depth, so my board is half an inch thick. If I went, and let's say I made this three inches, that's obviously going to cut through my material. So when I hit calculate, the computer knows that. It says, hey, warning, tool will cut through material. Your material thickness is 0.5. Your maximum tool depth is 3. That's not good. It will cut through the base of the material and possibly damage the machine bed. This is why it's very important to know how thick your material is because CNC machines, computers, they are stupid. They will do exactly what you tell them to do. So if I tell it to go down three inches, it's going to go down three inches. If I have something underneath, like my machine, it's going to still try to go down three inches as much as possible. All right. So that's the drilling tool path. We don't really need that one, but it's there. All right. I'm going to get rid of all this, these extra circles I made. And let's look at the V-carve toolpath a little bit more in depth. So what the V-carve does, that's the one we're using for our plaque here for our project. What it does is it tries to carve out in between two lines. So looking at this E right here, what it's going to try to do is carve out anything in between these two lines. If I have this star right here, it's going to cut out in those stars. So the problem is, if I have a large shape like this, it's going to try to carve out that whole entire shape. So if I did that with this setting right here, so my start depth is zero, that's the top of the board. I'm not doing a flat depth, I've got my 90 degree half inch bit, and I'm going to hit calculate. This will probably give me an error. So I'm going to calculate, and it says, hey, it's going to cut through the material. You will probably get this at some point during this assignment. This is something you need to be aware of, because I don't want to cut through my material. If I hit OK, let's reset my preview. Because we used, we're using that V bit, the shape of this is shaped such that that V bit we'll cut it. So if we have that 90 degree V bit, half 90 degrees 45, so that's going to be a 45 degree angle. So it will cut whatever it needs to do in order to make your shape. So if I hit preview, speed it up a little bit, you can see it cut out my shape, but it also went all the way through my material. I don't want that. So to fix that, there's a couple ways to fix that. One is, let's say I wanted a rectangle right here. Well, if I just put another rectangle inside of that, 
or outside, doesn't really matter. Remember, like I said, it wants to cut in between two lines. So now I have two lines right there. And now if I calculate it, it's going to try to cut in between, just in between these two lines. Just in between these two lines. If I calculate, calculate, reset my preview, preview visible. Now it has a nice cut in between those two lines, and it did not go through my material. Another nice thing about this, using the V-carve, is now if you look at those corners of my rectangle, I have nice crisp 90 degree corners. The way it does that is the bit will actually go down that Z direction. It'll go down into the board and come up such a way that it can give you those crisp corners. So that's one of the nice reasons that we're using this V-carve profile, or the V-carve toolpath, along with that 90 degree bit is to give us those nice corners. So the way we use this is, you know, let's, let's bring our other thing back here. I know I kind of showed this before, but I didn't really go over it. Here, let's start over. I have all these tool pads here. I don't need them anymore. I'm gonna right click. I can either hit uh, delete this, which will just delete one of them, the one tool path that's selected, or let's just delete all. I'm just gonna start over. So V-carve, highlight everything by 90 degree half inch bit and I'm going to hit calculate. So luckily, so hit reset preview. Luckily this one will not go through the board because it didn't tell me it's going to go through the board. So I'm going to hit preview visible toolpath. Boom. All right, so that looks good. Now what might happen because these are going between two lines is let's say we have a border like this. Now, when I highlight everything, it wants to find two lines to cut in between. So it's going to say, go from the outside to find a line, and then it's going to find the next line, which is right here. So it's going to try to cut out all of this material right here. So when I hit calculate, I'm going to get that error saying, hey, it's going to cut through my material. Are you sure you want to do this? Right now, I'm going to hit OK, reset my preview, and you can see it's going to cut far through my material. So when I hit preview, all right, now it looks pretty cool, but any time it cuts through, it's going to cut into our machine, and we don't want that. So if you had a picture like this, and you didn't want that, you know, but you did want the border, so two things I could do. One is I could get rid of the border, and that would be what we had before. Or if I just, you know, made another line around here. Again, it wants to find two lines to find in between it. So now what it will do is it will find the outside line. It'll find the next line. All right, so it'll cut in between there. Then it's going to find the next line and cut in between there. So when I hit calculate, now it's going to look kind of like I had it before, but with a little border. So I'm going to hit reset and preview. And now you see what I have that and pretty little border on the edge there. All right, so that's the tool paths. Um, I'm not going to go through much of the other ones right now. Some of the other things you might need to know is uh, maybe delete tool path, recalculate. If you make a whole bunch of changes to it, there's the recalculate button right there, which will just kind of reset everything. This button right here is the preview, which is nice to have. Um, if you wanted to change the way it'll look, you can play around with that. Um, this changes it only on the computer. It's not going to make any difference once it actually cuts. This is just how it looks on the computer here. So, where was I? Maple? I think that's what it was. I don't know. Um, and, yeah. So next I'm going to show you the trace bitmap button. That's the one that everybody's going to want to do to make sure you get good looking pictures here.